this point, we uh, want to uh, introduce another speaker, Mr. David Zine. David is a veteran and has been a friend of the veterans for many years. So we would like to have him come forward at this time. Thank you very much. I only got 10 minutes. <laughs> the flags up front, please. And somebody grab that POW MIA flag there, a, a couple of people. Flags up front, just up here. It's indeed an honor and privilege to see each and every one of you here. This isn't about us. This is about each of you and all the people that we're representing. We're representing literally hundreds of people that can't be here. Thousands that can't be here. We're representing hundreds and maybe thousands of people that won't be here. They got other things to do. Fine. It's time to celebrate and rejoice. I would like everybody to stand and give a rousing ovation to all the veterans and all the hometown heroes, all the people that support veterans in the military. Give them a big hand. Let it rip. This is a celebration night. This is a time to rejoice that we're alive. We're happy and we're healthy and we're here. Thank you very much. You're taking my time. It's enough. <laughs> We're celebrating something else tonight. The hometown heroes. Those are the people that support the military during times of military action. They're being honored by veterans and patriots. They're being honored, they're being celebrated. We're celebrating something else tonight. We're celebrating that this country is alive and well. We have a wonderful future before us. It takes participation. It takes people to be involved. Those individuals that are most critical of government, those people that are most critical of politicians or lawmakers, deserve to be one themselves. <laughs> and you got to excuse, I got to back up. I can't shave or cut my hair until I do my fifth movie, my fourth movie I'm doing two weeks from Monday. Dead man's hand, I gotta be California Joe. He's the one that strangled Jack McCall. Jack McCall was a guy that shot Wild Bill Hickok in the back of the head. I gotta strangle him. And the only words I gotta say in the whole movie is, you better get out of town before sundown. Dead people don't walk. <laughs> Big movie, but it's a part. I gotta back up, but uh, this was so educational, I was taking notes this whole time. I just gotta back up about Vietnam. In 1972, the Vietnam Veterans Advisory Council, we tried to stop the deer hunter from appearing. We got wind of that movie, the savagery, representing Vietnam veterans as drug addicts and crazy lunatics, bull crap. We tried stopping it, we were not successful. 1981. 1981, Gary Wetzel, Congressional Bell of Irish, he bit in a couple of us. The other one is deceased from Agent Orange. We tried to pass Agent Orange resolution that the state of Wisconsin Veterans of Foreign Wars, they, they stopped it. They said, you cannot demand action from Agent Orange, for Agent Orange. You gotta request, you gotta ask permission from the United States Congress. We said, no, we demand. We passed it on the floor of the Veterans of Foreign Wars State Convention. We went to national, they paid me $725 to ride my Harley out to Los Angeles. Wouldn't you do that? Jimmy boy, you do that in a minute. <laughs> out in Los Angeles, they, the same thing. On the, they said, the resolutions committee, you cannot demand action from the United States Congress. You must request. We said, bullcrap. We pass it on the floor of the United States, excuse me, we passed it on the floor of the Veterans of Foreign Wars National Convention, and it went. We were the first major organization, 1981, to demand action on the most poisonous substance known to man. Dioxin in its original form. Talk to any Vietnam veteran. I mean, if you want to see something, if you want to learn about Agent Orange, the most prolific videographer in the state of Wisconsin is video recording this whole celebration. That's Dennis Wood, raise your hand. And he's gonna to want to talk to anybody that wants to talk to about Vietnam veterans, loved ones, hometown heroes, he'd like to talk to you after this program. You can look up on Facebook, he's got just an outstanding about all veterans. Something else we're celebrating tonight, and we mean it from the bottom of our heart. 
And as, as we're celebrating, I want you to look at these flags for a second. Look at these flags. Don't try to be our nation's first flag. In 1754, and in, in my next few minutes, my next seven minutes, I want you to think about the spiritual transcendence that connects us all with everyone that's ever lived, loved, honored, and cherished freedom, even before the great American Revolutionary War. In 1754, Benjamin Franklin said, we compare ourselves to that creature. That creature will not strike unless it's molested. Once it's molested, the results are swift, silent, and deadly. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a symbol that took our country from disunity to defiance in the United States of America. Uh, some people think you can't fly that flag. It, 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 it's not right. It's, it flies in all the United States naval ships since September 11, 2001 in international waters. There's another flag. The POW MIA, Prisoners of War, Michigan Action. Oh, geez. Every veteran, every Iraq, Persian Gulf, Afghanistan veteran, we a, a part of us is missing in action. We're a prisoner of that war, whatever war it was. And the loved ones of families that have served, suffered, and sacrificed. Served, suffered, and sacrificed. The sight, sounds, and stench of war can never be forgot. The Christian flag, the only flag that can fly above the American flag. Only one flag can fly above the American flag, and that's only during a religious service, at sea. There's another flag. Look at that flag. There's a legend about that flag. That's a mountain howitzer. In 1836, at the Battle of Alamo, a Mexican soldier recalled and had it written in his diary that he, he bayoneted and finished off a Tennessee soldier. The Tennessee soldier had in, inscribed into the sand, come and take it. He was mortally wounded. He would have died anyway, but the Mexican soldier finished him off. My only few minutes, I want you to look at those flags and feel our, our heritage since this country. Something that's going to be happening is Highway 8 could be the Mideast Conflict Highway of the whole state of Wisconsin. It was introduced into law, but it never passed. State Representative Jimmy Boy and a number of legislators authored it. Next session, Mideast Conflict, Afghanistan. Persian Gulf, Iraq, the global war on terror. Never before has a highway been named for those entities to our knowledge in the United States of America. Highway 8, isn't that kind of close to here, isn't it? Kind of close. <laughs> highway 8. The, vet, the Vietnam Veterans of America have a slogan. One generation should never forget another generation. One generation of veterans will never forget another generation. When we passed the Vietnam Veterans Highway 10 Highway, it was World War II and Korean vets that took the bull by the horns. And I gotta be honest with you, this session, or the last session, not a lot of Iraq, Persian Gulf veterans were active in the movement. It was Vietnam veterans. We're, we're, we're gonna come forth and help you out, but you gotta help yourselves too. Post-traumatic stress disorder, survivors, yeah. Oof. You can hold it down a little bit. If somebody else wants to help hold, you can. But I want these flags up. Um, I, I, I should back up. Uh, Gary Wetzel is involved in a very serious motorcycle accident, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. Um, mechanical failure in his motorcycle. He was on his way out to Sturgis to get the highest award possible from the Sturgis Motorcycle Museum Hall of Fame, Freedom Fighter. And he went down hard. He wasn't expected to survive his first one or two surgeries, but he did. And I would just like to say that perhaps we should be praying for him and each other and all the families on that wall. Some of us believe that the best defense we have against terrorism, the best defense that we have against future war is prayer. Pray. And, and in closing, my time is... Oh, I got a couple minutes left. I'm not closing. I got a whole bunch of things here. Oh my gosh. But prayer is so critical that we pray. It's so critical that, that, that we think of other people. On my motorcycle, I got a number of slogans and biblical uh, passages, but one of them is, others don't make us angry, our reactions do. Another one is, those who seem to deserve least, deserve prayer most. Then perhaps my favorite one, James 5.16, repenting, and praying for others heals ourselves. Don't think of that.
Look at those men and women on the wall. Think of all their families. Look at the Vietnam vets that you know that committed suicide, all veterans, that, that they're depressed, they're overweight, they, they don't follow their doctor's orders, they're committing slow suicide. It's the death instinct. They need to have joy and jubilance. They need to have something to live for. And helping other veterans is one way to do it. Look at these individuals, veterans of foreign wars, American Legion, look at this. Look at these individuals, AMVETs, Rolling Thunder, AMVET riders, American Legion riders, God bless you. You, you, you might be surprised, but every one of these individuals, I bet you won't find a single one that's only a member of one organization. They're a member of multiple organizations. But they believe that the best way to combat post-traumatic stress disorder and survivor's guilt, the best way is to help other people. And they get joy out of that. And all of us as hometown heroes can do that. Whether you're in the military or not, you can help. Just by your being here is glorious. Look at all the people that aren't. They should be, but they could, they can't be. God bless them all. Just, I would just ask that the Lord just bless each and every one of you. And I would ask that you love this country from the bottom of your heart and the essence of your soul and with every fiber of your existence. And, 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 just, and, just, and just communicate it eye to eye, heart to heart, soul to soul. Communicate that. And you're doing it well just by being here. This is a critical time in our country. It's a wonderful country. It's a wonderful state. There's much more to do, and we can do it together. God bless each and every one of you. May you have hunger in the heart. Fire. Oh, I gotta say one more thing. Oh, geez. We we wanted to have a press conference, and they 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 wouldn't let us allow us to have it. And to my knowledge, it's never hit the public. This could be one of the main audiences. I don't know that's gonna get this. But salute heroes with prayer. You can salute the way you want. Salute. Heroes with prayer, paying forward returns. Who are the heroes? They're individuals that have been trained. They are so trained, they're inspired for the rest of their lives. They're trained in all kinds of activities that could save lives. Those individuals are veterans, law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, citizen soldiers, Salute heroes with prayer. Whenever you see one of these individuals say a little prayer, God bless you. God bless your family. You're paying for it because it might be you or one of your family members that they're there or your life they will save. Salute heroes with prayer. Paying forward returns. Oh, we got a thing on a motorcycle. That, that we, we get so, you can talk to some of these bikers around here, we get so overjoyed with life when we're going down that road and we feel the wind in our face. We just, we just, we just can't, we just can't. It's hard for us to sit on the seat. It, 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 we, we feel like levitating up. But, but it, we're in, it's incredibly content, euphorically fulfilled. We're just saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this experience. Thank you for this opportunity to praise you, to worship you, to be your instrument. We're going down the road. It's a good thing we got our hands on the handlebar sometimes because we get so high with life. I would just ask that we can convey that to those people and their families that are on that wall by working to make a better way of life for all of us. Thank you. May you have hunger and heart, fire in the belly, and souls absolutely on fire as you leave tonight and for the rest of your life. God bless you. Thank you.